Whether it's too many video games, too little exercise, too much junk food, or not enough drive to compete, researchers are not exactly sure why testosterone levels are on the decline for decades now. This means that most likely your grandfather had higher testosterone levels than you do at your current age. And this is a little odd given the fact that medicine, technology, and quality of life have all continued to improve. But the very same technology that allows us to live more comfortable lives can be one of the major things contributing to a reduction in testosterone. For example, the modern food and agricultural system has been improved to the point that most people that are around today have to worry more about eating too much food rather than not finding enough food to eat. The bad habit of eating too much of the wrong foods is all too easy to fall victim to nowadays that we have infinite aisles of instantly available junk food to choose from at any time we want. This causes many men to walk around with a high body fat percentage. High body fat percentages in males reduce testosterone because the extra fat cells produce an enzyme called aromatase, which converts testosterone into estrogen. This reaction occurs mainly in fat tissue, also known as adipose tissue, and it's actually a natural process that helps maintain a balance between your hormones. However, when there's too much aromatase activity due to a high body fat percentage, it leads to a reduction of available free testosterone. That's why it's important to maintain a healthy body fat percentage. An ideal range for optimal male hormonal health is, for most men, between 10 to 15%. According to the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, this number can range further from all the way from 8% body fat to 19%. If you're currently above that 19%, you can lose excess fat by sticking to a calorie deficit in a way that's sustainable for you, whether that be intermittent fasting, carb cycling, keto, vegetarian, or one of the many other options. Another major technological breakthrough that could be very damaging to our testosterone levels is plastic, which was invented in the 1800s, but didn't go into mass production until after World War II. Unfortunately, plastics happen to be a major source of exposure to synthetic hormones and xenoestrogens, which can have very serious consequences for not just your testosterone levels, but also for your overall health. Phthalates and bisphenol A, also known as BPA, are two chemicals commonly used in the manufacturing process of plastic products that have been linked to delayed puberty, low testosterone, feminization effects, and sexual dysfunction in various human and animal studies. For example, in a study that compared men working at a chemical plant that manufactures BPA to men working at a tap water factory, the men who were exposed to BPA had significantly lower total and free testosterone levels than those who worked in the tap water factory. Other chemicals such as PCBs, bisphenol S, dioxin, vinyl chloride, styrene, and phenyloic epoxy resin all also disrupt testosterone. These chemicals can be found by consuming food or drinks packaged in plastic containers or wraps, and especially when microwaving plastics. In general, it's especially important to not expose the plastic to high heat like what happens when you microwave it or put hot food or water into a plastic container. Doing these things causes way more of the estrogenic compounds to leak into your food and beverages. To reduce exposure to these toxins, do your best to avoid plastic products for storing and preparing your food and water as much as possible, but especially be wary of heating the plastic. If you're able to, the best option is to try to go for alternatives like wood, metal, glass, or ceramic. Now something else that you can be doing every day without realizing the effects on your testosterone levels is maintaining poor or weak posture. That's right, body language can have a powerful effect on our physical and mental states, as shown by a study that compared levels of testosterone and cortisol in subjects that held either low power poses for two minutes or high power poses. Examples of low power poses in this study were things like taking up less space and having your arms crossed. Meanwhile, high power poses would be postures that were more open and would take up more space. Surprisingly, the results showed that only a mere two minutes of performing a high power pose increased testosterone by 20%, while reducing levels of the stress hormone cortisol by 25%. On the other hand, the low power pose group saw a 10% reduction in testosterone and a 15% spike in cortisol. So imagine how much the way you carry yourself daily affects your testosterone. Although the study is limited to two minutes, many people claim that they feel improved confidence, strength, energy, and mood when simply maintaining better posture throughout the day. And all of these effects happen to go hand in hand with improved testosterone levels as well. Another counterintuitive thing that can lead to lower levels of testosterone is consuming too much protein and not enough of the other macronutrients. Now keep in mind, most people don't consume enough protein, which means the majority of people watching this video would likely benefit from getting more protein rather than less, both in terms of body composition and overall health. 
However, many gym goers, including beginners, often go overboard with their protein intake, which is not only unnecessary from a muscle building and body composition perspective, but it can actually lead to lower testosterone. For example, one study found that when male participants followed a high protein, low carb diet for 10 days, their free testosterone levels fell 36% lower than when they were on a high carbohydrate, low protein diet. Now I'm not saying that you should go on a high carb, low protein diet because there's plenty of other research that shows similar negative effects when dietary fat is reduced to less than 20% of total daily caloric intake. We also have a more generalized study that found a dose dependent reduction in testosterone in men that were lifting weights. The higher the percentage of calories they consumed in the form of protein, the lower their testosterone levels were. So as a good rule of thumb, I always recommend getting 0.72 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day. And then the rest of your calories, you can divide between carbs and fats based on what you prefer and what your body feels better with. Next, let's talk about getting enough quality sleep. And we can see how drastically poor sleep quality affects testosterone in a study that measured a group of men's testosterone levels first thing in the morning after waking up. They were all given wristbands to monitor how long each of them had slept for. And the results showed that the men who had only slept for four hours had testosterone levels hovering around the range of 200 to 300 nanograms per deciliter. Meanwhile, the men who slept for eight hours had their testosterone levels at around 500 to 700 nanograms per deciliter. So regardless of how busy you are, make it a priority to get around seven to eight hours of sleep per night. If you struggle getting enough sleep, you could make some very simple changes to sleep deeper and stay asleep throughout the entire night. These include maintaining a consistent sleeping schedule every night, avoiding bright light exposure before bed, not drinking too much water directly before going to bed, setting the temperature in your bedroom to a relatively cool setting, and making sure you're consuming enough magnesium either through your diet or through supplementation. If none of these tips help you fall asleep relatively quickly, you could also consider supplementing with a small amount of melatonin, which is a hormone that naturally gets secreted to signal to your body that it's time to go to sleep. Right up there with sleep is stress. And in the modern day and age, we are all stressed out about everything, even things we don't necessarily need to worry about. A small amount of stress is actually good for us, but chronic stress is terrible for your health and testosterone levels. This is because an excess of the stress hormone cortisol can have many negative effects on the body, including muscle breakdown, fat gain, lower testosterone levels, and a weakened immune system. There are lots of studies in both humans and animals that have found that nearly all kinds of long-term stressors can significantly lower testosterone. In pretty much all these studies, the suppression of testosterone goes hand in hand with the increase in cortisol. And the reduction in testosterone is not caused by increased excretion, but rather through decreased test production. That's why it's so important to take steps to combat high stress. Some of the best ways to reduce stress are super simple and free. For example, meditation and relaxation exercises have been proven to lower cortisol and increase testosterone in multiple studies. Taking walks in nature has been linked to reduce cortisol levels in Japanese test subjects. Adaptogenic herbs like rhodiola rosea, ashwagandha, and shilajit can help reduce cortisol while increasing testosterone. And of course, like I already mentioned, getting enough sleep will also help with managing stress. Aside from things like posture, plastics, and having too high of a body fat percentage, there are obviously certain things in our diets that are directly linked to lower T levels. For example, consuming trans fat, which is a type of unsaturated fat that has been artificially created by adding hydrogen to liquid vegetable oils, is a common issue. Trans fats are found in many processed foods such as margarine and some baked goods like cake, donuts, and frozen pizza because they help improve texture and shelf life. Unfortunately, trans fats are pretty bad for you. For example, studies show diets high in trans fats lower testosterone and sperm quality in both male rodents and in humans. This is because trans fats increase inflammation throughout the body while also lowering the levels of the good cholesterol, HDL. And that HDL happens to be a crucial building block in the testosterone synthesis process. To reduce your exposure to trans fats, you should be eating primarily natural foods such as fruit, vegetables, unprocessed meat, fish, nuts, beans, and seeds. By avoiding processed and packaged foods such as crackers, cookies, cakes, muffins, pies, donuts, and fried foods like french fries or chicken nuggets, you'll be eliminating most trans fats out of your diet. If you're ever unsure, you can always read the ingredient list on the food labels to make sure they don't contain any partially hydrogenated oils. And when you're cooking, only use healthy oils like avocado and coconut oil instead of solid shortenings or margarine spreads made with partially hydrogenated oil. 
Just like eating too much cake and cookies won't be doing your testosterone any good, drinking too much alcohol is another devastating habit for testosterone production. Now, I'm not saying that you have to completely abstain from alcohol in order to maintain healthy levels of testosterone. However, drinking excessively can lead to a decrease in testosterone production and other associated negative effects. For example, in rodents, various studies show that alcohol has a dose-dependent testosterone suppressing effect, meaning the more that alcohol is introduced, the more the testosterone levels will fall in rodents. In human studies, heavy alcohol consumption is also strongly correlated with lowered testosterone levels, and studies show that chronic alcoholics tend to have much higher estrogen levels and much lower testosterone levels when compared to their non-alcoholic counterparts. Now, as mentioned earlier, having a drink once in a while isn't going to be much of a problem. It's excessive drinking that leads to lower testosterone levels and many other negative health effects. Finally, for our ninth bad habit, many people are not drinking enough water. Not only is being dehydrated bad from a gym performance perspective, but it can also lower testosterone levels while increasing cortisol. For example, studies show that even a mild 1-2% to dehydration rate can significantly raise cortisol levels and lower growth hormone secretion. Looking closely at one study that tested the different effects between a hydrated state, a slightly dehydrated state, and a more dehydrated state, the scientists found that the less water the participants drank, the higher their cortisol and lower their testosterone levels went. So make sure you get enough water. A good tip to help with this is to down one to two glasses of water before every meal. Not only will this hydrate you, but it'll also reduce how many calories you consume during that meal, which benefits fat loss. So that about wraps it up. I really hope this video has helped you out. If it has, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And like I said in the very beginning, carrying around excess body fat is one of the major factors that can reduce your testosterone production. So if you'd like to skip all the trial and error with burning off that excess body fat, you can head on over to my website and try my free six week shred. You'll get a 42 day workout plan, a recipe book, a six week meal plan based on your preferences, and an accountability coach to guide you through the entire process. To find out how this program works, you just have to click the link in the description, or you can head on straight over to my website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon. Pump it.